Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, we have a twist. It's a plot twist. Um, I've got an old classmate of mine from back in seventh and eighth grade. I think we called that junior high school or something like that. Um, but we kind of reconnected on Facebook uh, a little while ago, and I found out that she was into some sort of health and wellness. So we're going to find out exactly you know, what she's been up to the past 20 years or something and uh you know find out what she's got going on so stay tuned it's gonna be fun we're missing a piece of the puzzle you start getting healthy and you just become a better person you need to start focusing more on the individual all right so welcome ashley to the show thank you thank you Glad so to be here yeah, I know. This is this is interesting. It's like I never would have thought that we would be doing anything like this. But literally, I think I just came across your Facebook page and I noticed that you um, were promoting some type of some type of health and wellness service. So I said, OK, that's that's funny, because obviously, you know, when we were children, like neither one of us was talking about health and wellness, but we all we kind of ended up here. So I figured it'd be good to connect. I wanted to kind of start by. Um, asking when did you decide that health wellness or you know just kind of holistic um health was important to you like when did when did that first start for you so honestly i've always kind of been like the healthy eater right like um there's like aunts and uncles like they literally recall stories of like oh ashley is you know, they, they called me a picky eater, but I like to say I'm just particular, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I didn't even eat candy as a child. Like literally my grandpa passed out candy every Sunday after service. Cause he was the pastor. Right. And so like everybody's all gathering in the office and I'd be like, Oh yeah, I want one. That was only because it was my grandpa giving candy right. to everybody else. I'm like, you can't leave me out, you know? <laughs> um, and I'd literally, I'd take a lick and give it to my mom. Like, I don't even want this. <laughs> um, and so fast forward, right? Um, 2004 is was kind of like the beginning of like, oh, this is getting ready to go somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, my mom found out that she was allergic to basically like 90% of the things that she was eating. She got the 100 prick um, allergy test and um beef tea mold malt like all of those things were on there and so we really kind of had to um reinvent the wheel of like what we were eating not that we ate like that bad before but um it definitely gave us more of a focus on wow look at the ingredients that are in the things that we're consuming um you know, like that was back, like I used to eat catfish back then and, uh, you know, beef and pork, you know, and that was actually around the time too, that I noticed that pork chops, uh, smelled like chitlins to me. Mm. So that was, that was the beginning of like me cutting out pork, but it took a little bit longer for me to let the bacon go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that and then um about 2000 was it 2011 was when I went to culinary school and within going to culinary school is when I really kind of explored more of the health and wellness now like even in between that time I still was always kind of more cognizant of like eating healthy. I've always loved fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Like um, my nickname for from one of my uncles was strawberry shortcake because I'm like, you got some strawberries? I'm happy, you know, yeah. like I don't eat much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that, you know, culinary school really, really took that dive into learning more about um, eating healthy and just, you know, reading labels and that's actually when I first started my very first um actually my very first health focused business was in 2007 
but it was just like it was just like turkey burgers <laughs> um you know like but it was like you know it had like tomatoes and you know like fresh ingredients and stuff like that and I remember getting so much backlash so uh actually I thought like oh health professionals like that these are the people that I should promote to and like I could just deliver lunch to them every day and I had nurses and doctors asking me like where's the collard greens and the fat bag and (laughs) the the bs you know what i'm saying i was like what the crap like yeah but what i was so confused like (laughs) i mean i I understand it now like i understand like it's not it's not the health care system is is not meant for actually health care yeah it's not about health (laughs) like actually nurses are some of the most overweight people that you're you're going to find um just in my experience i'm not um, putting that on everyone um but yes so fast forward 2010 11 in culinary school and um so that's when i started my like i i started um label reading and uh, grocery shopping and catering and things of that nature as a business. Um, And so just as time has progressed, I've just gotten deeper and deeper into it. Um, I I tried out veganism for a little while. um, And I still like to have vegan um, meals throughout Mm -hmm. the week or whatever, but it's just not an entire lifestyle for me. Um, I still own some beeswax (laughs) that I purchased purchased years ago for like, uh, like I like to, I got to get back to it, but I I do like to make um, like deodorants and uh, chapstick and stuff like that. So um, yeah. So that's interesting that you say that you've always kind of been the health oriented person. So um, you've been, I I would look at it as just really being, being in touch with, um, what we what how we're supposed to eat like we're not supposed to eat candy it's so weird to hear that a child didn't really like candy because typically um you get that sensory overload it's really hard not to eat candy my mom would like my mom was crazy she would run in the room while we were like playing or coloring or whatever she'd throw candy in the room and leave like that was her one of her ways of showing love so we got addicted to candy very early and uh-huh. that was something that I had to break later on in life. Um, so basically, you're saying that you re- you really started to kind of hone in on it when your when your mom started dealing with the the allergies and things. Did you um, were you all able to successfully you know aid her in, in transitioning to something new or what? What kind of ended up happening with that? When she so she got the allergy test right, and they were like, "Oh, we can give you these drops, and you can still eat all of this stuff that you're allergic to, or you can just um, eliminate everything that you're allergic to and just kind of see how that goes." And like I said, it was beef, and tea, and malt, and mold. You know, so like malt is in everything. It's in cereal. It's in dressings. It's in alcohol. Everything. So mm. she cut out everything, and she lost six pounds in a week. And so, yeah. So just from that alone, we were just like, oh, this, there's something to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's something to this. So that's actually one of the things that when I talk to people about health and wellness, I'm like, so do you know if you, you know, talk about their allergies, if they're allergic to anything? And um, if they if they have never had an allergy test, then I always implore them, like, yeah, go get allergy tested because it it can definitely open up some doors and help you to release because allergies, like if you're allergic to something, it actually ends up storing as fat in the body. So um yeah, she ended up losing about 70 pounds like oh oh, yeah like over the summer it that was like summer 2004 so she lost like 70 pounds like over the summer just from 
continuing to eliminate her allergies. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we were already kind of on the whole eating healthy organic tip. And she was um, she was working out at that time as well. That's super helpful, actually. Uh, You're probably eh, I don't want to lie, but you're probably the first person who's highlighted getting allergy testing on the show. So that's a nice little takeaway, something, you know what I mean? Just kind of simple people could do to determine whether or not they're having reactions to the food. I mean, in, in my opinion, when I look at it at a, at like a, uh, a deeper level, it we're allergic to a lot of stuff, even if we don't outwardly express it. Like there's a lot of like dairy, you know, is one of mm-hmm. those things that people eat and consume on a regular basis. But like we're all really our body rejects it. Like we even if you're not lactose intolerant, like your body still rejects it. Um, mm-hmm. I One of the conversations I had with one of my friends a long time ago was uh, getting rid of dairy and how that like alleviated acne. You know, she had she had mm-hmm. acne and a lot of drainage and stuff. She got rid of dairy, went away. Right. And, and she thought it was a seasonal allergy, but turns out it was dairy. So, right. um, yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah, that mucus builds up in the body and uh, it causes inflammation. So inflammation expresses as like acne or even swelling or, you know, all of those those sorts of things. Which it, it just causes more problems like mucus is like a good thing when when it's, when, you know, it's it, the body uses it for a reason, but then it like mm-hmm. builds and builds and builds and becomes its own problem. And so getting rid of the mucus is so important. Um, mm-hmm. So so what is it that caused you to want to like develop this into um, almost a business, right? Helping people doing the consultations uh, like why why did you want to because it's one thing to do it for your mom. Um, and mm-hmm. I understand the culinary piece and learning how to cook and maybe wanting to, but why did you, why did you want to kind of do this as a business? I've, like I said, it's always been, I've always liked that whole like cooking and helping people. And I've always loved food. I actually, uh, originally went to culinary school in high school. And so I just really fell in love with that piece. Like just the whole food i just love that that i love food okay i'm a foodie okay ashley will talk about food all day long yeah. uh and so just being able to to help people to eat right like especially like within my family right <clears throat> i have a particular side of my family well i can see it on both sides actually um where I realized that that food is being healthy is about longevity, right? Like you want to be here to play with your kids. You want to be here to play with your grandkids. Like what I love is that my mom, my mom and I, we actually, one summer we were outside, like my mom is in her fifties. We were outside playing kickball with my little cousins. Like they were like, preteens and stuff, you know? So like for us to be able to keep up with them, like, oh, okay, yeah, uh-huh. we play kickball. <laughs> Did your grandma play kickball with you? Did your great auntie, your older cousins play kickball with you? Not mine because <laughs> like my cousins, maybe my first cousins, but not like once people got like 25 and up, they were usually too slobbing mm. to, to, to play and to be jovial you know to like have fun so that's one of the things that I just really find to be important like I have a lot of people in my family who are over 300 pounds um a cousin that's younger than me he was just recently in the actually I have a cousin who passed away on his 35th birthday about three years ago he was he was huge he was huge. He over 300 pounds. He was always big. Okay. So that's just something that's like, like runs in the, right. in their, like on their dad's family, in their dad's side of the family. Right. right. But I, you know why I use air quotes because, <laughs> um, but anyway, so always was a big baby, big. Like I remember being 
five or six, something like that. And I kind of teased him about it a little bit. He was two years older than me. I kind of teased him like we was all going down, like head first down the slide. And uh, he said he was going to go head first. And I was like, no. In my head, I'm like, no. What if you fall? Like, we can't save you. You can't do that. You're too big. Don't do that. Like, <laughs> and that wasn't... <laughs> No, he cried and I had to make up for it. But like, oh man! You know? <laughs> but um, you know, like, just big. And so his heart gave out. Basically, is the gist of it. His heart gave out, and that's how he passed away. Um, but his whole entire family. He was the oldest of six. His mom, all of five of his siblings they're all big mm. and it's not to rag on them but like his little brother who is my little cousin was just recently within the past two years in the hospital um concerned about heart and stuff like that he got six kids wow now can you imagine if he had had a heart attack and died now he done left his wife with six kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a game. It's not a joke. Yeah. That's all. So so to me, and then I have an, another uh, relative. She'll eat eight dips of UDF for dinner. And like, for y'all who don't know, UDF is United <laughs> Dairy Farmer. It's like the, I think it's probably the most popular ice cream in Cincinnati, in my opinion. But Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Like if you're from Ohio, you don't know about UDF you live under a rock <laughs> yeah 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 uh but yeah so just like just seeing how how that has really affected my family right so like my grandpa he was he spent almost the last 20 years of his life in a bed <clears throat> because he had a stroke and then he was on a cane, but one day the cane got tripped up on a rug and he fell, right? Mm. So he was scared to walk after that. So then he got in a wheelchair and then somewhere along the line, he ended up being in the bed and he never left the bed. So over 300 pounds, think about my grandma had to turn his, turn his butt over to take care of him, to change his diaper and to help him with the urinal and all this kind of hard work. My yeah. grandmother ain't, she's in her eighties. He only, he, he only died four years ago. Right. So she's taking care of him. She would have to get, um, you know, she, he, he did have some nurses and stuff that would come in and stuff, but like my cousins and my uncles were always being called on like, Hey, come help me with daddy. Come help me with grandpa. Um, and nobody really wanted to do it. Like of course not. nobody wants to turn his heavy body over. Cause you know, so just having that experience within my family and then even seeing the, the drastic difference between that grandpa who, who passed away in a bed. Right. Mm. And my other grandpa who who passed away while working, literally while working, like he was still he was probably I remember him being the same size. He got smaller, if anything, as he got older, you know, like as he because he was in his granddad was 91. Um, but. Literally working like a uh, blowtorch, ember popped he caught on fire mm. and the healing the healing process is actually what killed him is because he was in his 90s you know um so just looking at that drastic difference of you can live to 80 i think it was 84 85 and be in a bed or you can live to 90 plus and still be pushing it you know right. like not to say that not to say that there was like, cause he did have like a couple of hip replacements or something like that. And he did develop di diabetes along the way, but um, still drastic, 
drastic quality of life, right? So at the end of the day, I just I just want people to be healthy and I, I just want to um, just show the world you don't have to eat your life away. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's not worth it. And you can still enjoy those things that you like. I still eat a piece of fried chicken every now and then. I mean, like, uh, it's not the greatest to eat because actually I was watching Dame Dash the other day and he made me feel like crap about eating chicken. Do you hear me? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He started talking about fecal matter and stuff. I was like, she did. Like, oh. <laughs> I like Dame God. Dash, man. He's um, me too. I think that he's probably, you know, you know what I'm saying? He's a he's a big personality. Right. Maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but I think he's got a good heart and. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, well, you said that the, the weight runs in the family. Like, tell me, tell me more. What does, because there's a lot of people who think that weight runs in the family or heart disease runs in a family, which might, which might be true for them or diabetes runs in a family. Um, tell me more about your thoughts about when stuff run like that runs in a family so <laughs> you want the ashley but so uh no the problem is no one runs in your family <laughs> that, <Okay. All> that's, <laughs> re that's really the bottom line okay but there are genetic yeah there may be a few genetic predispositions right but at the same time it's really I look at it the same way I look at traumas, right? Like, um, there, the reality of it is your family has eaten the same for how many years, right? Like, everybody eat fried chicken, everybody eat fat back, collard greens, extra butter, extra oil, deep fried everything. <clears throat> and so... That's what causes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, a, a, with stress additionally, right? Mm. Because um, I do know some people who have high blood pressure and they're, they're in shape, you know, um, it's just, so his is more from stress. Um, but the, um, in terms of for, for the most part, when it comes to like food related things, like all of that kind of stuff, diabetes, um, a lot of it is really diet driven. And when I say diet, I'm not saying, oh, what what's the, the fat diets? Like uh, keto. There's a lot, the carnivore diet, um, Jenny yeah. Craig, Weight Watchers, yeah. Slim Fast. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, the way you eat is your diet, right? It's your your lifestyle diet. And um, when it's when it's packed with high fats, high sugars, um, any of those if if everything you eat has an ingredient, <laughs> that's 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 the cause of that's the problem. high blood pressure. Yeah, all yeah. of this stuff. It ain't really that it runs in your family. Your family just nobody nobody ever took the time to to see what it was that they were eating that was causing these conditions. And um, so we're at the point now where like more and more people are are cognizant, um, but there are still a lot of people who just really like. They don't care. <laughs> um, or they just, you know, they like I have relatives that will say, Where's the fat people food? Like when they come over my house, where's the fat people food? Yeah. Well, I'm not fat, so you're not gonna find that here. Right. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> like what is here. that? Like uh like uh what was it? Some honey bun snacks and stuff like that. I'm like, ah. first of all, I got three littles and if I have anything like that in my house, they will hunt it out. Like it doesn't matter. I could I could find the the highest, darkest corner, uh -huh. and they're still they're gonna climb up in that little corner and get it out. It's so I'm like, man, like 
<laughs> There's no hiding anything from you people. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the the uh I had that's something that I learned um pretty early on when it's like whenever you take the time to really like look at what's going on, you see these trends in your family. I actually did a video maybe two weeks ago talking about conditioning. And a lot of the mm -hmm. conditioning we get is from our parents. You know, there's this story of this little girl that goes to her mom and she's like, mom is making bacon and she cuts the bacon in half and puts it in the pan. And the little girl's like, why do you do that, mom? And she's like, I don't know. My, my mom used to do it, so I do it. Maybe you need to go ask grandma. So she goes to ask the grandma, grandma, why you, why my mom cuts her bacon in half and puts it in the pan? Why? She said, you did that. Why do you do it? I don't know, baby. I did it because my mom did it. Right. And so she's like, you need to go ask your great grandma. Goes to great grandma. And uh, she's like, grandma, great grandma, mom and grandma do cut the bacon in half, put it in the pan. Why, why do y'all like, why do y'all do that? She said, like, baby, I did that because the pan was too small. Right. So <laughs> right. The, the pan was too small to fit the whole bacon in. So she right. cut it in half. Duh. But the conditioning right. was passed on to the children with they just did it just because they saw it. Um, mm -hmm. I was recently, you know, talking about Q-tips. Like, where did we all get the idea to use Q-tips in our ears when they specifically say, don't use Q-tips in your ears? Like, it's conditioning. Specific. You saw your mom use a Q-tip, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to pay attention to those dietary habits that we got from our parents. Um, my, my, my family's no different. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of obesity in my family, but just in, in our community in, in general, like we got to be more aware. So, um, what are, what are some of the things that you actually do for people? Like, I, you know, obviously, you, um, have some, some pretty unique suggestions. Like, what do you, what do you actually do? So, um, I work with finding, the best route like I customize um a health and wellness uh I like to call it a prescription um for my clients um so first of first we work on mindset all right because so we got to find out unpack everything like why are you eating like this is it conditioning right or is it trauma mm. um and then which actually kind of oftentimes coincides, right? Because like sometimes parents use food as a, a way of helping their child to cope with trauma. So mm -hmm. they're conditioned to, um, to, to eat, um, to deal with it. So unpack those bags, work on mindset, and then... Um, I, we affirm ourselves like affirm like yeah you got this right like you know you whatever it is whether it's just you uh creating a new diet for your lifestyle um or w losing weight however however you want to look at those goals for your health and wellness um and then diving into now here here are the steps like so what is it that you need in particular what um what precursors are you dealing with um degenerative diseases right mm -hmm. what degenerative diseases are you are you are you dealing with um allergies of course um uh, i always encourage everyone to get allergy tested and then um you know the things that they should do like how much water should you personally drink, right? Not just this overall uh, suggestion. Um, and then what foods should you personally eat? What, mm -hmm. what fruits and vegetables do you need? What um, nutrients and vitamins and minerals are you personally lacking, right? Um, and then kind of just kind of, so I, I just like to customize it based off of what is really needed as well as implement some of those things that are kind of like a general, this helps, right? So um, every once in a while I do encourage supplements. Um, I do have some supplements that 
I I do back. I, I believe that they work. Um, but even in talking about like beliefs, right? Like every whatever you believe in is what's gonna work. <laughs> now that's true. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds really balanced because you touched on um, a lot of key facts. As a matter of fact, I just had a consultation and uh, the lady wanted to talk about, you know, just fasting and, uh, you know, what she could do to, to, to deal with her weight and, and, you know, the issues that she feels like she may have developed. Um, it's very common that people want to kind of just dive into something and hurry up and get the weight off or whatever. I said, you know, just based on what you've told me, you have issues with consistency, right? You, you've tried, you, the first, one of the first things she said, I've tried this, I've tried that, da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, well, we need to work on consistency. It's like, the, I think the benefit of, of coaches or just having somebody who can look at things um, big picture is they can help you break down and, and highlight areas where you're weak in so that you can focus on strengthening those areas like, so let's get good with being consistent with something small. Like, let's build that up first and then slowly add, add, add. Let's work on the mentality. A lot of people you talk about, you know, affirming positive reinforcement is is like it's something that I incorporate in like all aspects of my life because I, I learned how, how detrimental negative reinforcement is and the unhelpful thinking styles. Um, people think that's fine. We, we, we grow custom to, you know, how you was kind of ragging on your cousin. I used to do that to my brothers. Like, I'm not going to say the name of the brother, but one of my brothers, I nicknamed Fat Factory. Like, and that's rough. It, that's rough. Like, we, I mean, I was <laughs> like, I was, we were probably like, I don't know, eight, nine or whatever. But I mean, children, yeah. the, the thing about children is they are, they, they don't hold, they don't pull punches. So if you want to get a really accurate assessment, talk to a child about something. But um, that's really good. Get some get some testing done. Figure out exactly what is wrong. Like, what are the areas you need to, to improve on? Put together a, a plan. And, and then, of course, it's just people following through. Like, because, you know, eating, eating better, uh, drinking water, like, you people you'd be so surprised at how many people don't drink water it's like how do you like we are water like that's what we're made out of and you don't yeah. drink water and you wonder why you're sick or why nothing's working um right. it's like those basic things are so important it's, it's wild i i have uh the relative who who eats the um eight dips of udf right she doesn't like water she she's oh i don't drink but your skin is dry that's like you know what i mean like i used to have this um this preconception that like overweight people would be like soft and fluffy and one day i was like leaning on her and her skin wasn't soft and fluffy I'm like and then it hit me like she don't drink water. That's why. Like, yeah. so like rubbing up against her face, like we we're just kind of being cozy. I'm like, man, and suppleness comes from drinking water. Definitely. Right. Like, you know, you can't drink soda every day, all day, and think that you're gonna lose weight. All right. Or you can't think that you're going to um be in any way healthy mm -hmm. like it's just not possible <laughs> it's just not possible it's not possible uh what's that stuff fago all that kind of stuff it's just junk it's sugar it's waste <laughs> we, we gotta we definitely have to be realistic and you know that that's one of the things that i also like to uh, encourage people to understand out the gate They'd be like, am I going to have to do this forever? Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, if you revert back to whatever habits you had previously, you'll get the same outcome. So you take that for what it is. But developing new habits, look, change is work. 
like growth is work. It's going to be uncomfortable. That's what it's all about. Get uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you talk about um, comfort food. We're, we're, we, all we do is eat comfort, but we're comfortable all the time. That's why we're, we're dealing with so much disease. So getting uncomfortable is really, really important. Um, yeah. I wanted to, uh, before we wrap up, give you an opportunity to share like any social media, any, you know, for, for people so they can reach you and, you know, potentially schedule consultation or work with you. Yeah. So, um, I am on Facebook as Ashley wise, um, or on Instagram at one, the number one wise Ashley. So wise is W I Z E. Um, and yeah, so that's really the at best wise ways. one. Okay. So one wise, one, at one, wise, one wise. Okay. Funny story. Uh, very short story. I used to think when I was in school, we were in school together. I'm like, Ashley Wise. Like, I always looked at you as like one of the smart kids or whatever. I'm like, her name and her intelligence that goes together. Like, I wonder if she's smart because her last name is Wise. Um, <laughs> just, 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 just child thoughts, I guess. But right, right. I don't know, because uh, I got some fam. I got some wise family <laughs> members that 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 uh they they didn't do quite as good as yeah. i did in school. i think it was just me you know like yeah. you know i loved i loved it and then i realized like was i was i smart or was i like really good at like just remembering stuff you know what i mean like really good at following directions right like <laughs> uh. I, I had to come to like that whole like maybe i mean i'm still smart now don't get me wrong I'm intelligent, <laughs> all that good stuff okay right. um so I'm, a, I'm a beast okay but okay. uh yeah just one of those types of things where you just kind of think like because school doesn't that's a whole nother conversation school, <laughs> school is not quite they they taught us that it was the epitome of it all right and look at how many of us <clears throat> how many of us are accomplishing major goals and even major financial um, milestones without some huge long doctor's degree right mm -hmm. and there are people who took all that time to get that doctor's degree and they're in major debt and then they're not even making half of the annual salary that they that they thought they would be making at this point in their career i mean look call it what it is college is a business you know school is is designed to create manufacturer employees right yep. um and then when you're when you're an employee you're at the mercy of a job so you know whatever the job think, says they want to offer you but of course a job is a business and all of these businesses mm -hmm. are designed to make money that's what businesses are for so if they need to, right, if, if they're, if they need to squeeze you to, to get more out of you and pay you less, they'll do that. If it's good business practice, like, um, I mean, we, we really do have a lot of influence, but the problem is we're very fractured. Uh, we're arguing about politics, religion, you know, sex. We're, we're arguing about all these very di divisive topics. So we can't really unite on anything. And so that that um, that, you know, divide and conquer. It's, you know, if we came if we came together as a people, especially in the United States and not necessarily had like one mind per se, but we all want to have better outcomes. And we know that this particular thing is a problem. If we all came together as like, yo, this is a problem. This needs to change. It would change. But we're so mm -hmm. fractured and we're so busy watching Kim and Kanye get together and break up. And you know what I mean? We're so TikTok and cats videos. Uh, we're so distracted. We can't get together to do anything. So, um, and it, it's all very intentional by those that put these. Yeah. But um, this was fun. This was fun. And I definitely hope that, you know, people are inspired to reach out. I really like your approach to you know how you how you do your consultations how you work with people because it's different but very helpful and 
I like to, you know, what I've learned is people learn from different people. Like, you know, people resonate with different people. So I love having different types of people with different methodologies come on with different stories. Um, because, you know, the base information is kind of the same. Drink more water, eat well, right? And sometimes right. that's a little foggy about what to eat. Uh, right, right. You know, stop practicing negative reinforcement, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's, you know, it's all kind of the same. So it's really about who you resonate with, you could work with and uh, just get those outcomes. So it's been a pleasure. Do you have any final words for us? Any quotes or words of wisdom that you want to impart? Oh, man. Put uh, you on the spot. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just, um, I'll share my newest and most favorite mantra. Life is good. Life is great. Everything is always working out for me. So that's just one of the things that, uh, that's just one, like as a mantra, you know, you just, it's something that you repeat in your head all day. So like, whether it be working out, I mean, losing weight or getting healthier or, you know, increasing your income or just clearing the gunk out of your mind to, to, to change the habits, like trauma, to have habits that you develop from trauma. Mm. Um, it's just something to like repeat in your head all day, especially when you're feeling like crappy, you know, feeling a little gunky or whatever. Um, it, it's going to instantly lift your mood and smile, right? Smile. It, it always increases the vibe, you know? Yeah. So. That's, that's actually a really good one. Smile more. A lot of, yeah. a lot of people walk around with frowns on their face. I know I'm, I'll probably be frowning a lot. Um, well, I probably don't frown, but I'm a, more like just, you know, straight face, but uh, yeah. Face. Yeah. Smiling. I mean, even seeing people smile, if you think about it, you see someone smile, it, automatically kind of wants you make you smile when someone mm -hmm. smiles at you you have that ability too right and then there's this whole idea of like karma you put out good energy you get good energy back um you never know that one smile could you i've heard stories of people talking about how they were like on the brink of destruction and someone just smiled at them and it was like what am i doing like they just came out of it, it it's just um, we don't give ourselves enough credit for, you know, how we can impact other people. Uh, but I love that, like, create a mantra for you, you know, whatever, whatever um, suits the outcomes you desire and, and just repeat it because thoughts become actions and, and you know, actions help you get them outcomes. So uh, this has been fun, Ashley. I look forward yes, to yes. Yeah, I look forward to an opportunity to keep working with you. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Uh, we just reached the 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So congratulations to uh, you know, a healthy alternative. Uh, with that being said, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time.